YouTube VP Shooting Academy here and I'm going to be talking to you about House Bill HR 127. So gear up and I'll meet you on the range. So real quick before we get into things, I want to thank you for watching and welcome you to the VP Shooting Academy page. Uh, if you like what you watch, please hit the like button, hit the follow, it's free, and leave a comment down below. Thank you, and I really appreciate everybody. So to start, H.R. 127 is a bill currently being introduced to the House of Representatives, which would require licensing for owning and possessing firearms and ammunition, would have a national gun registration, and even prohibit certain ammunitions. H.R. 127 is being introduced to the House by Democratic Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, who, if you don't know, is extensively trained in firearms and their safety. I've held an AR-15 in my hand. I wish I had it. It is as heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. Uh, and the bullet that is utilized, a 50 caliber, these kinds of bullets, uh, need to be licensed and do not need to be on the street. Maybe not. So, diving into this bill a little bit deeper, we'll start with the licensing portion. One of the first requirements to notice to be licensed is the detainee must be 21 years old. So, at 18, they say you're old enough to vote, old enough to start a family, but don't plan on uh, protecting yourself or that family with a weapon. At 18, you can go off to war and fight for your country, but you cannot practice your Second Amendment right in the Constitution of the country that you are fighting for. Then it goes into you have to pass a background check, which, anybody that knows, is already done whenever you buy or purchase a firearm. So would this mean being licensed would remove that background check or in the waiting period? No, of course not. But they put this in here to make them sound like they are doing something that isn't already done. Thing is, newsflash, criminals usually don't use legal ways of getting weapons. And why would someone who breaks the law not break the law and just ignore whatever stupid restrictions you put out there? But to top off the application process with a little, uh, you know, cherry on top, the applicant must undergo a psychological evaluation. Yes, yes, yes. The government is going to force you to be seen by a psychologist who they say, who they say is appropriate to judge you. Not maybe you have your own psychologist that you see normally that you've been seeing for years. No, 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 no. And you know, I'm sure the attorney general won't have any bias when choosing those people. And you know, on top of that, hell, there are doctors with six to eight month waiting periods before they can see a new patient. What do you think your wait time is going to be seeing one of those approved psychologists that, you know, the other tens of millions of gun owners are trying to get in to see? So even if you're one of those people who believe that this psychological evaluation would in no way be biased or detrimental to Americans and their Second Amendment right, wait, there's more. So as stated in this article, the psychologist must evaluate the applicant, at least two other persons in the applicant's family or associates, and any spouse or former. Yep, an ex can now help dictate whether or not you have the right to own a firearm. But I really want to be serious and emphasize this point because this is one topic I strongly believe in, and it is getting women into shooting. One of the great equalizers in any fight is the ability to defend yourself with a weapon. And when your attackers may be larger, stronger than you, or have a weapon, the weapon you have may mean life or death. Some statistics show nearly 30% of women will experience some sort of abuse by a partner in their life. Do we really want to offer a chance for their abuser to take that ability to defend themselves away? Well, HR 127 does. And there's already been other situations where government has played a hand in tragedies. So, is HR 127 still not bad enough? What have I told you would potentially hurt people who seek medical help for their mental health conditions and substance abuse? Required by the bill to deny anyone a license if they have ever been hospitalized for any of these and gives them the authority to deny if they have ever or are diagnosed with any of these in the future. So do you own a gun and suffer from depression? Well, this bill passes, only one of those will be true. These politicians will be making people choose between bettering their health or keeping their constitutional right. 
I believe you should be able to do both. But what do I know? I thought this was America. I thought this was America! Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America! Okay, so let's now get into the real part of this bill that I know has every anti-Second Amendment lobbyist dying to do for years. And now that power has shifted, they aren't even trying to hide it, and that is this national gun registration. If the bill passes, every gun owner would have to report to the ATF the make, model, serial number, date acquired, and where the firearm it will be stored. For years, they hid behind the title of Universal Background Checks, which for anyone who actually breaks down what that would consist of, knows they would eventually lead to some kind of registry of every gun. Now they are just throwing it out there and saying, screw it, tell me what you have, where it's at, so I know where to come get it. So, who would have access to his private info? Well, just everyone. The ATF is to make the registry data available to the public, I know I've heard a lot of people arguing against this because the potential for people to break in the houses and know what they are up against and what they have the ability to take, and trust me, that's true. But my fear goes well beyond this. We live in a society now where media portrays gun owners as stereotypical extremists. That if you own a gun, you are a threat to everyone, people are going to be able to use that against you. Looking to get a job you really want? Well, if the people hiring you don't agree with you owning guns, maybe you won't. I'm sure school boards and PTAs wouldn't try to uh, look at these and use these to find reasons to maybe segregate your child from the rest. And for what? Because what is the main goal of this gun registration? It's to take your guns. Why else would they want to register them? Think about it. What is one way that a registry would prevent crime? I think people just like to believe that a gun registry is this magical like DNA database where they can take a bullet and match it up to a gun and be like, I know, we got them. We got them now. But if they actually woke up from this Harry Potter magical world that they think they're living in, they would realize that that could never happen. Instead, what it does is give the government a list of where to go when they want to come for your gun. Well, at least take the guns from the law-abiding citizens because, as I said before, criminals aren't going to change their moral compass and suddenly start following the law. And especially when that law wants to take something from them, they will allow them to have an advantage over all the people who did get their guns taken away. Registration leads to confiscation. And if you don't think they want to take your guns, well, don't take it from me. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. <laughs> Then the bill goes on to cover special considerations as military style weapons. I didn't pay much attention to this because I feel like this is just something they're going to slowly critique throughout the years if this gets passed as to, you know, anything that holds more than 10 rounds, more than three rounds, more than one round, something to build off of. They went with stereotypical guns that they like to show in the media. I don't think it's something that'll stay. I think it'll be something that'll slowly through the years be added to and changed. It also goes to talk about prohibiting all 50 cal ammunition or larger and requiring insurance to own weapons. What does this insurance policy really cover? Who knows? But you better pay the 800 bucks. And the fines if you break these policies? Well, let's just say you'll be paying them off longer than Karen will be paying off her student loans on the basket weaving major she got from the community college. I mean, seriously, who can afford these fines? Besides Sheila Jackson, here she's been getting pretty good deals on first class seats. I want to thank you again for watching and tune in next time as we discuss the theories about the ammo shortages going around right now and call out some price gougers. Comment below what you think of HR 127 and what else you'd like to discuss here. Till then, if clear, hammer down and holster. Winchester 9mm 115 grain went for over $1.50 a round. Cheaper than dirt, pricier than donkey dick.